Major funding for Odyssey was provided by the National Endowment for the Humanities. Additional funding was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the Polaroid Corporation. Every Tuesday, the Helene P. leaves the port of Athens for the Greek island of Hydra. Merchant ships this size have sailed the Mediterranean for thousands of years. They maintained the great city-states and empires of antiquity, and carried ideas as well as cargoes. But little was known of these ancient ships until recently. Now, the sea is finally giving up its secrets. American archaeologists excavating in the Mediterranean are learning from the wrecks themselves how the ancient ships were built, what they carried, and who sailed them. Bodrum, Turkey, a major seaport in the time of Alexander the Great. Today, Bodrum is the center of underwater archaeology in the Mediterranean and the summer headquarters of the Institute of Nautical Archaeology. The founder of the Institute is Dr. George Bass. Before there were farmers or shepherds here in the Aegean, there were seafarers. When people still lived in caves, did not make pottery, did not have animals and crops that they grew, they were able to cross the Aegean Sea, go to the islands to bring back volcanic stone to make into scrapers and blades for their primitive needs. If only one ship had sunk in each of the 10,000 years since we know that seafaring began, we would have 10,000 wrecks here in the Mediterranean alone. But we know that then as today, hundreds of ships go down every year, ferry boats, fishing boats, warcraft, commercial vessels. And so we have hundreds of thousands of wrecks on the floor of the Aegean and the Mediterranean, perhaps a million. But ancient wrecks are well hidden under sand and seagrass. To find them, Bass depends on the knowledge of sponge divers who have spent their lives walking the ocean floor. This diver is gathering sponges that have grown on broken clay jars, the cargo of an ancient ship. It was a sponge diver who led George Bass to a lonely coast south of Bodrum. Near a rocky cape called Serchi Leman, they discovered a ship that had last set sail in 1025 AD. Serchi Leman looks peaceful on a calm summer day, but storm winds funnel into this cove, making it a treacherous anchorage. A diving platform is anchored directly over the shipwreck. 100 feet below. Instead of using professional divers to excavate the ship, Bass formed a team of Turkish and American archaeologists and trained them to dive. A shipwreck carries to the bottom a way of life frozen in time. The Serge Le Mans ship contains clues to a voyage that ended abruptly 1,000 years ago. An ancient wreck looks nothing like the wrecks which I grew up seeing pictures of in books. There's no captain tied to the tiller, there's no rigging. What you usually see is a, just a flat, barren seabed with a few objects that are non-perishable sticking up through the sand. Picks and shovels are impractical. The divers use their hands. But clouds of silt reduce visibility. So an airlift, an underwater vacuum cleaner, is used to suck the sand from the wreck.
slowly, the cargo begins to appear. These clay jars once contained wine and were made in the 11th century AD. From the center of the ship, where the main cargo would have been stowed, the divers removed 29 shapeless lumps. They were brought to an ancient crusader castle in Bodrum, now George Bass's laboratory and a museum devoted to seafaring. Deep in one of the castle's towers, the cargo from the Serge Le Mans ship is being analyzed. Cemal Pulak, a Turkish archaeologist, discovered the lumps contained thousands of pieces of broken glass, cemented together over time by sand and marine salts. The lumps contain more than a ton of broken glass. With the removal of each artifact, the last voyage of the Serge Le Mans ship becomes an intriguing puzzle. To lift heavy objects from the seafloor, the divers use a balloon filled with air. In the wooden tray, another cargo is carried to the surface. These are chunks of raw glass called cullet. So on her last voyage, the Serge Le Mans ship carried a highly specialized cargo, both raw and scrap glass. But that was not all. In the second week of excavation, the divers made a surprising discovery. Nestled in a cushion of sand inside a clay pot, a delicate bottle had survived 1,000 years of ocean storms. The bottle would provide a clue to the ship's nationality. This long, delicate neck identifies it as the product of an Arab workshop. More than 80 intact vessels were discovered, the largest single hoard of Arab glass ever found. <laughs> 